Spinoza, and guest from future. Baruch Spinoza sat in his modest Amsterdam study, the glow of a single candle casting long shadows across stacks of manuscripts and philosophical treatises. The evening was quiet, punctuated only by the distant sounds of horse hooves on cobblestone streets. Immersed in thought, he was startled by an unexpected knock at his door. Who could it be at this hour? He muttered, rising to answer. Opening the door, he found a man dressed in unfamiliar attire, simple yet made of materials unlike any Spinoza had ever seen. Good evening, Mr. Spinoza, the stranger said with a respectful nod. I come from a future far beyond your time. May I have a moment of your time to discuss ideas that might interest you? Spinoza, ever the philosopher open to new thoughts, studied the man carefully. A visitor from the future, you say? Very well, curiosity compels me to invite you in. They settled in the dimly lit study, the stranger glancing appreciatively at the volumes lining the shelves. I understand this may be hard to believe, the visitor began, but I assure you, my intentions are genuine. I've come to share advancements from my time that could enrich your philosophical explorations. Spinoza folded his hands, his eyes keen. Proceed then, what wisdom does the future hold? In our era, the visitor explained, we have developed devices called computers. These machines can perform complex calculations at unimaginable speeds. More remarkably, we have learned to connect these computers directly to the human brain. Spinoza's eyebrows lifted. Connect machines to the mind, how is such a connection possible? Through intricate interfaces, we can transmit information between the brain's neural pathways and the computer. This allows us to create immersive simulations, artificial realities where individuals can experience environments and scenarios indistinguishable from the physical world. The philosopher leaned forward. You speak of a reality crafted by human ingenuity, where the mind can inhabit worlds beyond the tangible. Fascinating. This suggests profound implications for understanding perception and existence. Indeed, the visitor nodded. But consider this, if we can create such simulations, it's conceivable that our own reality might itself be a simulation, orchestrated by a higher intelligence, a being or collective far more advanced than ourselves. Spinoza tapped his fingers thoughtfully on the table. You propose that what we perceive as reality could be the design of a superior consciousness. This aligns intriguingly with discussions about the nature of God. Precisely, the visitor continued. In this framework, the creator of the simulation, what some might call God, has the capacity to interact with us on a personal level, guiding and influencing our development. This could bridge your concept of deus of natura, God or nature, with the idea of a personal God. Spinoza contemplated this. In my writings, I equate God with the infinite, uncaused substance underlying all that exists. I've argued that God does not possess human emotions or intentions. Yet, if we consider that we are within a grand simulation, the simulator could possess qualities allowing for personal interaction without contradicting the infinite nature of substance. Exactly, the visitor affirmed, the simulator exists both within and beyond the reality it creates, imminent in sustaining it, yet transcendent in its broader existence. This duality could reconcile the impersonal infinite with the capacity for personal connection. A flicker of intrigue crossed Spinoza's face. This perspective offers a novel way to interpret the divine. It also resonates with certain mystical traditions I've studied, such as the Kabbalah, which speaks of the infinite divine essence manifesting in various emanations. Yes, the visitor agreed. Furthermore, our technology has enabled us to link multiple minds together, creating a shared consciousness. Individuals can connect their thoughts and experiences, forming a collective intellect. Spinoza's eyes widened. A collective mind. That elevates the potential for human understanding immensely. It echoes my belief in the power of reason and the importance of community in the pursuit of knowledge. With such connectivity, the visitor said, humanity moves toward a collective enlightenment, perhaps fulfilling a purpose set forth by the simulator. Our individual and shared experiences contribute to a larger design, Spinoza nodded slowly. If our reality is a simulation intended for our growth, then our endeavors in reason and ethics gain even greater significance. Our freedom of will remains, yet it's harmonized with a grander scheme. Precisely, the visitor said. This model doesn't diminish our autonomy, but rather places it within a meaningful context. Spinoza gazed thoughtfully at the flickering candlelight. Your insights prompt me to revisit my ethics with fresh eyes. Integrating these concepts could enhance the work, bridging gaps between philosophy, science and spirituality. I would be honored to assist in any way.
the visitor offered. Your contributions to thought are invaluable, and expanding them could impact future generations profoundly. Your arrival may well be providential, Spinoza mused. Let us collaborate to explore these ideas further. Over the ensuing hours, the two delved into deep discourse. They examined how the notion of a simulated reality could intersect with Spinoza's monist philosophy. How the unity of substance could encompass both the infinite and the personal. They discussed the ethical implications of a shared consciousness and the responsibilities it entailed. As dawn approached, Spinoza felt a renewed vigor. This dialogue has been most illuminating. The integration of these futuristic concepts breathes new life into long-standing questions. The visitor smiled, and your openness exemplifies the true spirit of philosophical inquiry. Tell me, Spinoza asked, in your time how are these ideas received? They inspire both wonder and debate, the visitor replied. Much like in your era, there are those who embrace them and those who challenge them. But the discourse moves us forward. Then perhaps some things remain constant across time, Spinoza said with a gentle smile. Perhaps, the visitor agreed. Thank you for your time and wisdom. As the visitor departed, Spinoza returned to his desk. He began to write, his pen moving swiftly across the paper. The conversation had ignited a spark, one that would lead him to expand his ethics, weaving in the profound possibilities introduced by his extraordinary guest. In that quiet morning light, the boundaries between past and future blurred. Ideas transcended time, connecting minds across centuries in the endless pursuit of understanding existence itself. Second, a meeting beyond time, Spinoza's new ethics. The sun dipped low over the Amsterdam canals, casting elongated shadows that danced upon the water's surface. Baruch Spinoza sat by his window, the evening's golden light illuminating the well-worn pages spread across his desk. His mind buzzed with the lingering thoughts from the previous night's extraordinary conversation, the idea that reality could be a grand simulation, and that technology could bridge minds, had ignited a spark within him, a desire to revisit, and perhaps rewrite his life's work. A soft knock interrupted his reverie. Spinoza's heart quickened, he knew who stood on the other side. He opened the door to find the man from the future, his features softened by a knowing smile. Good evening, Mr. Spinoza, the visitor said. Please, call me Baruch, Spinoza replied warmly. I'm glad you've returned. Our conversation left me with much to ponder. I hoped it might, the visitor said, stepping inside. The familiar scent of aged books and ink welcomed them as they moved toward the study. Spinoza gestured to a chair beside his cluttered desk. I've been thinking about the concepts we discussed, the nature of reality, consciousness, and the divine. It occurs to me that my ethics might benefit from these new perspectives. Would you consider joining me as a collaborator and student? Together, we could explore these ideas more deeply. The visitor's eyes lit up. It would be an honor, Baruch. Your work has influenced countless generations. To contribute to it directly is more than I could have hoped for. Excellent, Spinoza said, a rare excitement in his voice. Then let's begin. They delved into a spirited dialogue, pages filling with notes and diagrams. As they wove through topics of substance and form, Spinoza paused. There's another matter I'd like to discuss. In your time, are there movements or philosophies that embrace both rational inquiry and spiritual experience? The visitor nodded thoughtfully. Indeed, there is one that might intrigue you, a spiritual revival within Judaism known as Hasidism. Hasidism, Spinoza repeated, I'm not familiar with it. It emerges in the 18th century, the visitor explained, rooted in the belief that every individual can experience a direct personal connection with the divine. It emphasizes joy, humility, and the sanctity of everyday life. The teachings suggest that God is present in all things, and that by performing even the simplest tasks with intention, one can elevate them to acts of spiritual significance. Spinoza leaned back, absorbing this. Fascinating. It seems to bridge the gap between the intellectual pursuit of God and the experiential. Perhaps incorporating elements of Hasidism could enrich the ethics, making it resonate on both rational and emotional levels. I believe so, the visitor agreed. It complements your ideas about the imminence of God, that God is not a distant entity, but the very fabric of existence. Precisely, Spinoza said. And if reality is, as we've discussed, a kind of simulation, then the intentionality behind our actions gains even greater importance. Every choice becomes a way to engage with the underlying structure of reality, the divine architecture. They began reworking sections of the ethics, infusing them with the warmth, and immediacy of Hasidic thought. Where before Spinoza had focused on the geometric precision of ethics and reason, 
He now wove in narratives about finding holiness in the mundane, about the dance between the finite and the infinite. Consider this, Spinoza said, pointing to a passage. If we accept that God is present in all aspects of life, then our pursuit of knowledge is not merely an intellectual exercise but a form of worship. Every discovery becomes a step closer to understanding the divine, and, the visitor added, by embracing joy and sincerity in our actions, we align ourselves more closely with this divine presence. It's not just about what we think but how we live. Spinoza smiled. It's a harmonious blend, reason and emotion, thought and action. This could make the ethics accessible to more people, touching both the mind and the heart. As days turned into weeks, their collaboration deepened. The manuscript evolved, each page reflecting their shared vision. They debated and refined, the synergy between them palpable. One evening after hours of work, they took a moment to rest. The visitor gazed at the stacks of revised pages. You know Baruch, this synthesis of ideas might have a profound impact on the future. It could inspire a new way of thinking that embraces both the analytical and the mystical. Spinoza regarded him thoughtfully. That is my hope. Philosophy should not be confined to abstract thought, but should inform how we live and connect with others. Perhaps, through this work, we can offer guidance on navigating the complexities of existence, whether in my time or yours. The visitor hesitated before speaking. There's something else I should tell you. Hasidism also emphasizes the concept of tikkun olam, repairing the world. It teaches that through righteous actions, we can heal and transform not just ourselves, but the very fabric of reality. Spinoza's eyes shone with interest. That aligns beautifully with the idea of contributing positively to the simulation we inhabit. If our reality is malleable, influenced by our collective actions, then ethical living becomes even more crucial. Exactly, the visitor said. It's a call to responsibility, a recognition that we're co-creators of our world. Then we must emphasize this in the ethics, Spinoza declared. Let us illustrate how personal virtue contributes to universal harmony, how individual actions ripple outward to affect the whole. They worked late into the night, the boundaries between their thoughts seamlessly blending. The visitor shared stories from Hasidic tradition. Tales of sages who found wisdom in simple moments, who taught that the divine could be encountered in a shared meal or a kind word. Spinoza incorporated these narratives, enriching his philosophical arguments with vivid illustrations. The ethics began to transform from a solely rational treatise into a living tapestry of ideas, emotions and practical guidance. One morning, as the first light of dawn filtered through the window, Spinoza set down his pen. I feel we've created something remarkable a work that honors the complexity of the human spirit. The visitor nodded, a sense of fulfillment evident on his face. It's more than a philosophical text now. It's a guide for living fully and meaningfully. Spinoza gazed out at the awakening city. Do you think the world is ready for such ideas? Perhaps not all at once, the visitor admitted. But ideas have a way of finding those who need them. Over time, they can spark change in ways we can't predict. Then our task is complete, Spinoza said softly. We have sown the seeds. Let them grow where they may. They sat in companionable silence, two minds connected across time, united by a shared quest for understanding. In their collaboration, they had not only rewritten a book, but had forged a bridge between eras, philosophies and hearts. As the visitor prepared to depart, Spinoza extended his hand. Thank you for this journey. You've given me a gift beyond measure. The gratitude is mine the visitor replied, clasping his hand warmly. Your openness and wisdom have left an indelible mark on me and I believe on the future. Safe travels, my friend, Spinoza said. May our paths cross again in whatever reality awaits. With a final nod, the visitor stepped out into the morning light, leaving Spinoza to reflect on the profound transformation their encounter had brought. Alone in his study, Spinoza felt a deep sense of peace. He turned back to the manuscript, the new ethics, and knew that it was not an end but a beginning. A testament to the enduring power of ideas and the endless possibilities that emerge when minds dare to reach beyond the confines of their time.